Wow. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Thomas Sullivan Magnum PI. Yep. Big Biz Show's on the air. We are brought to you by Prudential. Let Prudential be your rock for retirement. Also brought to you by Splash Beverage Group. You know them, you love them. Stock symbol SBEV. Let's not forget Northwest Biotherapeutics. Good friend Les Goldman likes to be on the air today with us. Bayer Advance, better science, better results. Don't take any. Bayer Advance actually for fertilizer. Don't be sprinkling it on your Wheaties. A little company like called Starbucks. As well as Bloomin' Brands. They're a fine family of restaurants, Outback Steakhouse with authentic Australian food. Look at those blooming onions growing on the side of the road there in Aussie. Nice job, guys. Did you, wow. I can tell you the band doesn't ever have to rehearse. Like, rarely. They can just start playing stuff. But this has been a passion project of James East, our bass player. <laughs> Like, this is like maybe the only song in the 10 years I've been playing with James that he's ever actually worked on. <laughs> what, is, what is with it? James, vocal open. like, like, like what, what, is, what is it? It's Mark. It's, a, it's such a heavy Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I blame Mark. <laughs> Mark Hatter's roll like, up. Yeah, exactly. All right. Hey, listen, uh, once again, our good friend John Rood uh, is with us. John Rood is the CEO of a company called Momentus. Uh, Stocks of MNTS, he was with us for almost the entire show last week, which we'd love to have him back again. Momentus.space is their website, but MNTS is Stocks of Once again, he joins us uh, via Zoom. John, how are you, bud? Good to see you. Doing great. You guys are looking good there. It's not right. quite as up close and personal as last time, but looking good. Well, you're good. like a 30-minute flight down here. We should demand that you come in studio every week. It just gets you out of the, out of the office for a second. Um, hey, good. listen, I'm going to talk real quickly just about a, a, a teachable moment for our audience that... that we, you know, we talked to the highest technical trader uh, in the world, and then we also talked to the folks that are just getting into investing. Um, you guys had or have, you had a, had a board meeting today. What goes on in these board meetings that, that investors and shareholders, and I know you can't be specific on some stuff, but what, what it, talk about the purpose of a board meeting, because this is a really important part of a publicly traded company. The reason is, is that the uh, board of directors serves at the pleasure of the shareholders. And the CEO serves at the pleasure of the board of directors. So, so it really is a, a co-ownership type deal. And, and you, although have autonomy in your decision making, it is a group decision that's a bit of a checks and balances type thing, isn't it, John? It absolutely is. And, and actually, the, the meeting we had today was a special shareholders meeting in which anybody that holds shares in the company can participate. They vote on key questions. And we recently had a board meeting, and, and you're exactly right, boards really oversee they, their role is to protect the shareholders and oversee management and ma make sure that the company is maximizing value for shareholders. 45. In our case, we're really blessed that we've got a very strong board that has a lot of experience uh, in a variety of areas. And they definitely are, are pushing me, pushing management to make sure that we're doing everything we can to, to maximize the value of the company, both in the, in the near term as well as over the longer term. John, are you allowed to talk about the shareholder meeting that went on today? I, I am. We uh, had a public shareholders meeting, and the purpose of today's meeting was to approve a, a couple of questions. The main one was, can we do a reverse stock split, meaning uh, trade one share for, in our case, for 50 shares of a momentous going forward. And so the special shareholders meeting occurred. Uh, shareholders allowed to vote their, their votes in advance if they want to through proxy, or they can attend in person, and some did virtually. Uh, that's how these things are typically done now just to maximize participation. And as a result of that, um, the uh, stock split was approved by the shareholders. And so uh, once the uh, SEC declares it effective, then uh, the, the trading can take place under a one for 50 stock split. Uh, so, so my question for you, John, is uh, are you happy with the outcome today? Are we, are we happy with the board outcome as well for, for the board of directors meeting that you just had? Yes, I, I'm very happy about it. The management had recommended that the shareholders approve that. And what it will really allow us to do is, is reset the stock price at a much higher level, which will allow for more trading, we think. This is what we expect in the stock and make it easier for us to raise capital. Um, so, you know, depending on what today's share price ends at, but based on, on the uh, earlier part of the week, somewhere around $14 a share would be the math for one for 50. Uh, if that, you know, assuming the price stays the same as, as what it was in the rear view mirror here in the last sure. couple of days. 
for the board meeting, I'm also very pleased with that because I've got a very involved, very uh, both you know aggressive, but also supportive board that wants to see results that is really pleased with how much we've demonstrated in the technology. And um, they contribute a lot. I mean, we have people like the former head of the Export Import Bank of the United States. Wow. People that served as uh, chief finance officer at Lockheed Martin Space Systems Company, been at other major aerospace and space companies, and then some of them from the financial sector, that this was their background. And so we've got this nice mix, and probably the rock star of the group is Chris Hadfield, who was Canada's first astronaut in space. And became the commander of the International Space Station is kind of a international celebrity in this area. That's fantastic. I didn't know that Canada had a, sp had a space program. Um, or, or, <laughs> well, they, they fly with the Isn't US that funny? Army. I mean, you don't think about that. Uh, you know, here in the United States for a while. Uh, let's, talk about, let's talk about Momentus. For the people who haven't heard you talk about Momentus, really interesting because you conducted your first launch of your Vigoride spacecraft uh, last year. I beg your pardon. It was on May 25th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and and, and uh, you've deployed... Uh, 13 now? Uh, you had seven when we met you. customer 15, satellites. my goodness. And, and the next one is when, John? We're going to do another launch in November, and okay. we'll carry at least three customer satellites to orbit then, uh, potentially up to four. So we've uh, we've done 15 to date, and we flew three of our Vigoride orbital service vehicles, like shown here in the video that, that you're, uh, you've got up. From that, 15 other satellites were deployed, and we out of that satellite spacecraft up in under a year, which is so really you, fast. So you launch a satellite to deploy satellites. Where is this one going to be launched from in November, John? That one's going to be from Vandenberg uh, Air Force uh, Space Force Base in California. We got to send a camera crew we up. Go. Can we go? Yeah. Can we? Can we, we got to. Is that is that allowed? We should somehow figure out a way we can shoot this thing. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> well, not shoot it. You know what I'm talking about. I'm yeah. not, <laughs> photograph it. I'm Video. Not, I'm not saying. I'm talking about actually <laughs> film the yeah, thing. Yeah. Boy, suddenly there's black yeah. helicopters Aim. outside the studio. Yeah. John, um, you guys have made significant process in last uh, progress in the last year, um, becoming um, public trade on NASDAQ, putting your spacecraft through this sort of rigorous testing ground. I, I get, keep on getting email, especially after the last you know, long interview we did with you, which is fantastic. Talk about again what, you, what this thing looks like in five years, because look, this wasn't something we were talking about, space infrastructure, so to speak five, 10 years ago, okay? I mean, I, I know we were, it was on the radar five years ago, but we weren't really, really talking about it. Talk about now what we look like, you know, as, as we've seen the internet grow over the last 20 years, or we've seen cell phones grow over the last 10, 15 years. Talk about that a bit. You're, you're seeing commercial applications in space begin to replace those that have been done on Earth. And that's driving a demand for a lot more satellites, a lot more things in space, and they're much smaller and more capable than they used to be. So much more numerous, but that, and there's also a need and a, a drive towards in space habitation and manufacturing. A lot of private space stations raising significant amounts of money and they're gonna replace the International Space Station. NASA's new model is gonna be to contract with private companies to provide this service. It creates a need for in space infrastructure to transport these satellites, to reposition them. And just to give you an example, the huge growth in the number of satellites, uh, Last year, there were 2,500 roughly launched. The GAO estimates that in 2030, there will be 58,000 in orbit. You're going to continue to see this growth and large numbers of satellites. They need to be refueled. They need to be repositioned. And we not only provide that service to deliver them to the custom orbit and provide this service, but we're also building satellite chassis or satellite buses. And we think that's going to be a huge growth area for us because there's a big demand for smaller satellite buses like what we make. Uh, the, so, and, and what's interesting about the satellite bus model is you're talking about so many different verticals inside of your business then, because suddenly this is not just a one man or just a one pony show because you have so many other verticals that haven't even, haven't even started yet, but are on the horizon now because what you're doing now creates new, new business models all across the board, correct? Yes, and there's a very high degree of commonality between the underlying technology. So you're not spending huge amounts of R&D in order to develop that. You're just tailoring them for these other applications. So take the difference between the, the chassis that we use for the orbital service vehicle and the chassis we're using for the satellite bus. Very high degree of, of overlap there. Well, why do we want to do that? Because one, there are, there's business to be delivering satellites and servicing them, but the satellites themselves, that chassis, is very valuable. There's an undersupply in the market, both for commercial needs and government. I mean, just earlier this week, the Space Development Agency of the DOD announced a contract 
for two contractors to produce 72 satellites. It's over $1.5 billion split between the two of them. Mm. We at Momentus have bid for the next tranche of that that's going to be awarded here in the fall, uh, where the government is saying they're going to split a buy of 100 satellites between two companies to make 50 each. And so we're one of the bidders for that, and we really like our odds of winning. John, once again, always a pleasure to have you on the air. We've got to get you back in studio as Mike Costa passes out every time he hears about space infrastructure. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you on and off the air. John Rood, of course. Oh, there's he's, a, he's an amazing guy. The Space Transportation and Infrastructure Services Industry. John Rood, Momentus. MNTS. Go to momentus.space. More of coming up.